Roadrunner Rundown on Bakersfield.com and the CSUB Roadrunners Digital Network. Downtown Bakersfield, California. Driving Harrington for the win. Yeah! CSUB Roadrunners are your Western Athletic Conference baseball champions. Here's the voice of the runners, Corey Costello. Welcome in once again to Roadrunner Rundown, the official program, CSUB Roadrunner Athletics. I'm Corey Costello. Thanks so much for joining us. Once again on the show, we've got a lot of stuff to get to today as we get ready for a very cool week. We've got the, uh, the 44th annual Spring Barbecue coming up Thursday at the Icardo Center. And we're going to be speaking with uh, a couple of the members of Truxton Mile are going to join us on the program for the second half of the show. Uh, they're gonna, uh, we'll chat with them a little bit about uh, their opportunity to play the Spring Barbecue, a local uh, country and rock band that's going to be involved. We've had them on the program before. And unfortunately, their singer couldn't make it today, so no singing. But we're just going to talk music. And uh, they had a great story Last year, they were supposed to play the barbecue, and then the rain came, so it didn't really work out for them. But they're back for 2016. We'll talk to them about that and uh, much, much more. Also, it is that time of the year where we're getting close to the summer, and if you're thinking about what am I going to do with my kids all summer long? Man, do we have an opportunity for you. On campus, we've got camps going on pretty much all summer long in different areas, and we're going to talk about the CESUB basketball camps coming up a little bit later on the show with uh, our Director of Operations, J.D. Pollock, and he's kind of in charge of putting all the camps together. Biggest, they're anticipating the biggest camp ever. They've even brought in, uh, they even have additional court plans as well, looking to use about six basketball courts or so this year for uh, the CSUB summer camp. Camp. So looking for a uh, very good time there for uh, campers 6 to uh, six to 18, an opportunity to come and learn from the uh, from the best. So we'll talk with him about that coming up. And uh, those are coming up in the uh, last next to last week of, uh, of June. So we'll talk about that. And, of course, as we get closer to the end of this season of Roadrunner Rundown, we will preview more of the summer camps as well coming up on the uh, in the next couple of months. So great opportunity, all sports, soccer, volleyball, uh, swimming. It's just you name it, we've got something going on so a good opportunity baseball as well a great opportunity to get your kids active this summer and we'll start by previewing CSUB basketball camps coming up a bit later on the program also uh, next week on the show I want to get this out now we're going to have our uh, Rowdies Awards preview show where we're going to announce the nominees for the uh, fifth what's the fifth annual Rowdies now but it's going to be Rowdies late night coming up May 31st at the Majestic Fox Theater and we will uh, unveil the nominees next week on the program for our various awards so should be a good time and an opportunity to uh, kind of get a sneak peek of the show that we have coming to you on May the 31st. So a lot of stuff to get to on the program today, but first let's get to some highlights as the Roadrunners. We'll start with baseball. They were on the road in pretty much a series that they needed. A.J. Menares on the mound. The series split at one apiece on Sunday. He's good in this spot. He got some run support too. Third inning, two bases loaded for Malik Jones. Hit on the right side. It creates a little bit of chaos as one run is going to score, and then uh, if you see why it was a routine ground ball, but not a routine throw. Runners up one to nothing. Seventh inning, still one nothing. Two on for David Metzger. Stop maybe heard this one. Single to the right side. Dustin Fraley scores two nothing. CSUB after seven innings. Eighth inning, Jones at the plate. Row, row that ball behind Jones. One run scores. CSUB is now up by three. Same bat uh, at bat Jones this time. Here you go. Right down the right field line. Both Dustin Fraley and Jake Ortega are going to score. CSUB up five to nothing. And uh, Jones, yeah, stumbling, but still finding his way to second base. He had a big series for Bakersfield. And that's all they needed because A.J. was dealing, throwing a three-hitter complete with nine strikeouts. Here's some of the gems, too. And uh, that one, yeah, it's not going to work. And this one right here is my absolute favorite. Pretty much sums up the day for the uh, Vaqueros. Um, yeah, you're going to need that uh, back. But uh, nonetheless, the runners win it 5 to nothing. Uh, A.J. Menares winning whack pitcher of the week as well. He had nine strikeouts. That is a career high for that young man. And he had his first career shutout as well. He uh, pitches a three-hitter 
as the Roadrunners win the series over UTRGV 5 to nothing. That was on Sunday. On Friday night, the series started with UTRGV blanking Bakersfield 5 to nothing. Then Saturday, a slugfest and the second longest game in the history of CESB baseball, about three hours and 48 minutes, because that was a lot of hits in this one. Runners win it 11 to 6, 15 hits for CESB, but their pitchers did give up 11 walks. UTRGV, though, left 14 on base. Malik Jones uh, had the relief win for the runners on the mound. So Bakersfield getting the series victory and one that they definitely needed. Here's what's happening. The runners will be at home as they host Chicago State this weekend. Matter of fact, their next six conference games at home to end the conference schedule. Runners are still in the hunt. Uh, Friday at 6, Saturday at 6, and Sunday at noon. You can listen to all games on 1230 and 98.1. Uh, ESPN, but a um, a big opportunity. The runners have UTRGV right in front of them for that final WAC conference uh, tournament spot, and uh, the magic number is four for the Vaqueros, and that's any combination of wins or CESUB losses. So the Roadrunners need to just keep on winning, and they're going to have Chicago State coming into town this weekend at Hart Field again Friday and Saturday at 6 and Sunday at noon. On to CSUB softball. The Roadrunners were off last week getting prepared for this right here, the WAC tournament. They are in Seattle and they will take on Missouri, Kansas City in the first game Thursday at 1 p.m. If they lose that one, they'll go to the uh, the loser's bracket. will play again that evening, but the runners hoping to win and uh, play in the winner's side of the bracket on Friday, but that's going to be in Seattle. They are the host institution. You can watch all of those games on the WAC Digital Network, uh, the entire coverage of the WAC softball tournament, courtesy of the WAC Digital Network, starting on Thursday in Seattle. So CSUB track and field, they are also on the uh, road for WAC championships, hosted by Missouri, Kansas City. They're going to start on Wednesday. It's going to be held at the uh, University of Kansas there in Lawrence, Kansas, at the facility there, but hosted by uh, UMKC. So it should be a, uh, a great facility and a great opportunity. Runners expecting a lot of those, especially in the field events, to be on the podium. Watch out for some uh, some of those uh, Jose Flores as well. And the high jump has been tremendous of late. Uh, Madison Bundy, who we've uh, talked to on the, or we've talked a bit on the program before, but uh, former softball player turned into javelin thrower. She's now ranked in the top three in the WAC. She could be a uh, first athlete in a long time to get all conference honors in two different sports and expecting big things out of her as well in the uh, in the WAC championship. So keep an eye on that for the uh, track and field squad because they have a pretty good opportunity to uh, do some cool stuff this week in the uh, WAC championship. So WAC on the road for uh, for track and then same for CSUB softball and uh, CSUB baseball with two regular season series remaining. Again, Chicago State this Friday and then next Thursday, Friday and Saturday as they conclude the regular season at home against North Dakota. One more reminder, the CSUB Spring Barbecue, the 44th Annual Spring Barbecue, is coming up Thursday at the Icardo Center. You can get your tickets in advance for $30. Bonds and Albertsons locations, Mexicali restaurants, or lengthwise brewing locations. You can also get them online at valleyticks.com, or uh, you can get them at the door for $35 a day of the event. And again, that's going to be at the Icardo Center coming up this Thursday night. And of course, all the proceeds will benefit the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. So we've got a, a lot of that stuff happening this week. Big fundraiser for the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund as well. And uh, hope you will join us out at the Icardo Center. All right, we're going to step away and take a break. When we come back, we're going to be joined by J.D. Pollock and Matt Smith from CSUB Men's Basketball. We're talking camps. The uh, camp coming up for CSUB, the first uh, of their a couple, a couple basketball camps. One of them is a team camp, but the individual camp coming up uh, June the 20th through the 23rd. We'll talk with them about that and uh, how you can be involved and get your kids active this summer. We'll talk about that next. This is Roadrunner Rundown. Hey, what's up, big man? I want to go faster. Pedal harder. <laughs> Talking about our internet. OK, no problem. I'm serious, dude. Hey, I'm serious, too. We just increased your current internet speeds for free. Your lightning internet just got faster. For free? You know it. What about me, Jim? I have Bright House. <laughs> Yours, too. That's what I'm talking about. And me? You have Bright House? No. Sorry to hear that. But have your parents call me. OK. 
Spring is here, and that means it's time for the CSUB Barbecue. The CSUB Athletics Department is firing up the grill on Thursday, May 12th from 5.30 to 9 in the Yocardo Center. Don't miss a night filled with great food, great music, and great fun. Gather up your friends and family for a great time and get your tickets today at Select Bonds and Albertsons locations and all Mexicali and Lengthwise locations. Or get tickets online at Valley Ticks, the 44th Annual CSUB Barbecue, Thursday, May 12th in the Yocardo Center. We'll see you there. We strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to learning from those around us. Our professors and peers. Our coaches and teammates. And our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others just as they have inspired us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western, Western Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference. In a fertile valley, a growing university with record enrollment and graduates serving the needs of a thriving community. A tradition of athletic excellence. Basil, off the screen, Basil, two seconds, Basil for the win! Now, champions of the Western Athletic Conference, CSU, Bakersfield. You know, I was the uh, Metro columnist in the Bakersfield, California for 10 years, and one of the recurring themes in my writing was sort of the self-analysis of Bakersfield. Who are we? Who are these people? Where did they come from? What kind of people are they? My interest in the Bakersfield sound is kind of connected to that because we are those people. We are the people who created that music. We are the people who enjoyed that music, who bought those records. Because it spoke to us in a certain way, it sort of reflected who we are. Read this book and kind of you get a feel for, you know, who we are. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund creates educational opportunities for over 300 student athletes at CSUB. By becoming a member and donating to the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund, you're not only helping the Roadrunners fund the scholarship needs of our teams, you're investing in the future. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund isn't just developing student athletes. We're developing tomorrow's leaders from lessons learned during competition. For more information, log on to GoRunners.com slash donate and become a member of the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. Welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown as uh, we continue on the program, getting to that time of year where um, your kids are just about out of school. You're probably thinking, uh, what do I do now? I don't want them hanging around with me all, all summer long and bothering me and stuff like that. And I got to go to work uh, and I don't want to pay some babysitter a lot of money. Well, we have your best babysitting option <laughs> and that is CSUB camps. We've got them all summer long. And one of the first is going to be CSUB basketball camp, which will run June 20th through the 23rd. Joining us in program uh, in the uh, studio on the program is uh, our director of operations, J.D. Pollock. And uh, Matt Smith, a uh, the camp favorite from last year, right, J.D.? He's definitely that. He he had his guys. He was coaching them hard. He made sure they stretched well before they got out there. No pulled yeah, muscles. And his, his team in. made it to the championship. I don't remember if they won or not, but he was we he won. was after it. <laughs> yeah, Matt's not going to shy away from telling us that they won, that's for sure. So you guys, and it, this is kind of the fun part, and I know you, especially uh, the student-athletes like Matt, have an opportunity to kind of be coaches as well because you you employ them to sort of help out with the uh, instruction. I mean, Coach Barnes and, you know, UJD and uh, some of the other coaches, but – the guys really get a cool hands-on experience. They definitely do. I, I think it's good for them to, to change gears a little bit. They're fresh out of school. Uh, they've, they've just completed a long season, and then they get to kind of have some fun and give back. And every one of them, even us on the staff, everybody in the gym was that camper at some point mm -hmm. in time. And so it's, a, it's, it's fun, it's long hours, and then at the end of the day, it just feels really, really gratifying that you know you're, you're helping those guys. Those, those little kids look up to these guys so much. I mean, they run, run up to them, and they want their first shirt signed, and, you know, we got to figure <laughs> out if they're even allowed to get those shirts signed because it's just the whole thing's a lot of fun, so it's neat. Yeah, what did you enjoy most about uh, kind of helping out last year, Matt? I really just enjoy just seeing the kids enjoy themselves, you know. Like, at first, I felt like they were a little uptight, 
right. about the whole thing because it was basketball camp and Coach Barnes kind of stressed them because you know he can be kind of intimidating if you don't <laughs> like initially he can be kind of intimidating but he was telling them like y'all got to have fun with this which is a lot like the same things he tells us when we play yeah. like, you got to have fun with it so once they start having fun it was just a ball just to see them yeah. run around and play with so much heart and intensity it was nice and by the end of the w- the week I mean it starts on the 20th ends the 23rd so by the end of it I mean they you're they're not as shy anymore right they've opened up to you guys no, and- after after that first day oh uh, man the first day the parents kind of walk them out the car because yep. me and uh kid we were greeting people to at, at the front of the school so their parents kind of walk them out the car but that second day they just jump out the car running and just <laughs> yeah. run in there so it's always nice to see that like that growth and you see how comfortable they get with you yeah, exactly. Now, uh, let's kind of go through the camp a little bit. Uh, it'll start with, um, I mean, obviously you have your um, y- your your instructions and your drills and stuff like that. Is mm-hmm. that kind of what the first day or two, just kind of stuff like that? Squared yeah, away? We, we keep it as organized as we can. You know, the numbers were, were as big as they've ever been last year, mm-hmm. and we think they're going to keep growing this year. We had uh, uh, roughly 140 kids last year, and we think we're going to blow past 150 this year. Yeah. So what we do is we organize them by age and skill level first, and we keep weeding them uh, to the best category for them so they have the most fun they can. And some guys are just higher levels than others. Some guys are older or bigger right. and all that stuff. So we keep them separated the best we can. And then straight into uh, station work after getting them loose with stretching and ball handling, uh, they have a blast with that because each player is a coach at a station. So they're getting hands-on right off the bat with the guys. Uh, and it's good for our players, too, to, to learn the terminology for them to coach it as well. You know, I think that sometimes you learn when you teach. And so um, our guys get the station work, then we get going through through some competitions and games and lunches, and then after lunch it's it's what all camps are, and it's games from then on. So <laughs> that's all they want to do all day long anyway, but you got to teach them, and, and these guys do a good job with it. And so it'll start um, ages, you know, we, we had said maybe even 6 to 18, right, on the campers? Yeah, last year – Little Ryan Rosales, I'll never forget him. Small he was he was about as big as this table here, <laughs> and he was six. And so his mom was like, "I think he'll be okay." And I just said, "Ma'am, as long as you're okay with it, you know, we'll take him." Because yeah. I saw him shoot and dribble and all that. He was just short. He was six years old, and he ended up winning like two awards. He was a camp <laughs> yeah. favorite, and the guys were taking pictures with him. And he's, I mean, he's up to their knee almost. Yeah. And so. Little well, Ryan, he kind of set a new standard. So as long as you're good at six, we'll we'll make it happen. But um, it's just about comfort and safety for the family and the kid. And as long as he's used to being away and around these guys and in a basketball gym, then it all works great. Uh, and the uh, two hundred dollars per camper, and that includes, but that includes obviously all the the skills and uh, lunch provided daily as well, which is great. I mean, kind of saves the parents that stress as well. Yep, we've got we've got good sponsors, we've got good community support, and so um, you know we're hoping to keep those. Keep that going with the same people. Last year we had Chick Fil A, McDonald's, Wingstop, all the people that help us throughout yeah. the year. So uh, we're just gonna keep it going. Everything's going well right now. No reason to change it. Yeah, and uh, and again, you're looking for a, uh, a, a all-time high in campers. You think this year, Matt, considering the success you guys had, and uh, you kind of have some celebrity status now in the community. That might yeah. help the uh, might change the dynamic of the camp a little bit. Yeah, it's gonna be some new kids that want to come in there. And um, I was in the mall the other day actually, and I seen some of the campers from last year. Well, they saw me actually before I seen them. <laughs> they ran up to me. One of them like jumped on my back. It was <laughs> RJ and a few other ones. And uh-huh. I was talking to their parents. I was asking where they coming to the camp this year. And they were like, yeah. And then I heard another kid, like, he, he was kind of just looking. And I asked him, like, do you want to come to the camp? Because he wasn't there last year. <laughs> right, I remember right. That. So he was basically saying, like, yeah. And he asked his parents. So it's real interesting since, like, this season we had a lot of success. Right. So it was more focused in. So I'm pretty sure this camp would be better than the last camp. Yeah. And then once you get once you get those kids one time, it's a regular part of their summer, right? I mean, mm-hmm. if they they don't go to basketball camp, their summer just isn't right. Yeah. Oh, for sure. They talk about it when they come to the games. And, you know, obviously we have a very close atmosphere even at our, our home games. Mm-hmm. And so they can see them at the early, early shoot-arounds. And they immediately like, I'm coming to camp next year. I'll be there. <laughs> Will you be my coach? And so they, they think about it year-round, and they yeah. can't wait to come back. Yeah. And so I with the, a few of them rebounding for me. Before yeah, because <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> some of them are ball nice. boys. It's a great opportunity yeah. to be a ball boy for all the home games. Yeah. And so we had some regulars. We probably had about 10 to 15 guys that were at camp that became our regular ball boys. So it's it's neat. They, they're they around a lot, and the guys get to know them, so it's fun. Yeah, and they get shirts and pictures and all that mm-hmm. stuff as well. And so they're, uh, I mean, they're pretty pumped. Yeah, absolutely. But it really will be neat having that many kids come back because 
every year it's been growing, and then yeah. now with the success of the team, it's not just advertising a good camp. Now it's you know the program and right. and being a part of all of this, and so. We've grown. We're we're gonna have five full courts this wow. year. So we're in we're in the Icardo, which is three in our in our small gym, and then also we rented a court out over in our student rec. So we're gonna have five full courts. There'll be plenty of room this year to have fun. No, that will be great. And I've seen it grow. Like I remember Coach Barnes's first year in the you know summer of eleven. He just barely got here, and they were trying to put camps together. And yeah. maybe there was like twenty five kids that showed up that year because they didn't have a lot of time. But For sure. each year it's almost doubled. I mean, each year is doubled to the next year, and so now it has really become this. Uh, mainstay of the uh, yeah. of, of of the camp. Uh, now, Matt, when you get a chance to be a coach, a how much um, do you find yourself sounding like Coach Barnes, and B, what's your secret? Because obviously, you're a championship winning coach from last year. Okay, well, you know, I think I sound like Barnes a lot when I talk <laughs> to him. You know, I kind of encourage him to be loose like he did uh -huh. and teaching some things here and there. And as far as my secret, I don't really want to tell my secret because I know <laughs> some of my other coaches are going to be watching. They're going to be watching, and, yeah. You know, I'm, trying <laughs> I'm trying to repeat. They really do, though. When when they break down, whether it's box outs, ball handling, rebounding, you know, passing, whatever it is, I mean, they use the exact terminology that they're taught right. in practice. And, right. And it's because it's fresh in their mind. It's also the way they're learning the game. And so it's neat to hear these guys, like, They'll even say the the coach Barnes lines like "Let's go, let's go, let's go." You know, like, it just it comes natural to all of us because we're all together so many times in the in the gym. Yeah, awesome. Again, that's gonna be June twenty through the twenty third at the Icardo Center. I wanted to touch on team camp a little bit. This is more for the high school coaches mm -hmm. out there, uh, but uh, we we just kind of want to throw this out there too. This is gonna be the first camp, June tenth through the twelfth, and uh, this is this one too has really grown, and it's an opportunity really for all the summer league coaches to get your teams. Five games uh, or three or even just one if you yep. want to show up. But uh, this one, again, hosted by Coach Barnes, and and uh, it's a good opportunity. The officials get a lot of work. So how, how important is this camp for, uh, I guess, the community and kind of connecting in with, uh, with Bakersfield? You know, I, I think it's great because, you know, just like with the little guy camp, all of us played in high school and we all went to team camps. And yeah. so what it is is it's a way – to stick with your teammates at a time when you're not with them all day, every day during school. Yeah. And so summer basketball is big to keep training and all that. It's, it's a break from AAU. And, and we recruited some of the guys that came last year to team camp. You know, right. obviously some of them are local guys that we've, we know plenty about, but we had, a, we had a school from Colorado. We had schools come up from L.A. and come down from Fresno. So it's not just Bakersfield schools either. It's a, it's a really good opportunity to get some good talent in the gym. And so we like having over 20 high schools come in Everybody gets as many games as they want, uh, you know, with the five that they, they purchase right. for the camp fee. Uh, and then Sunday's a big tournament, so we always get a winner also. So uh, we are still open with team camp. We're still taking registrations. It's, it's in a month um, because there have been some turnovers uh, here in, in town yeah. with some coaches, coaches and things yeah. like that. So we still have spots, and it's going to be a really good camp again. I was surprised how – I mean, I checked it out I mean, the last couple of years, but last year especially just kind of peeking my head in the gym and seeing some of the local kids play – how competitive it was so i'm thinking it's summer league these guys are mm -hmm. you know they're probably playing other sports and just got done with classes and they're you know maybe not into it <laughs> it was all those rivalries you see throughout the year during the regular season yeah they were they come to the summer too i mean these guys were playing you know you had league rivals playing each other like they were playing in november or i should say you know january yep. in in june yeah, they really are. I, I think it helps that they get to know each other so well during the year. Some teams actually come in, and since we get such a good number, they request not to play right. league games. Yeah. And so then they go, and they play just as hard versus opponents they don't know as well. Uh, but even then, you know, our guys are working it. Our guys, we do have real officials that are that are practicing yeah. and, and getting – uh, knowledge gained there, but our guys are doing the score and the stats and and keeping up with it. So it's still it's still very well run, and yeah, the players get after it because they're either playing rivals or they're playing people they don't know. <laughs> but either way, they get after it. Yeah, and I know it is a uh, you brought up the official part, but I know that's a big. I think last year you guys kind of partnered up with their sort of the officials camp for the most part and, yeah, and workshop, and so they made it a pretty big. Uh, deal where they could evaluate what was going on and help the officials get better. Yeah, that's actually one of the better things about our team camp compared to other ones that I'm more familiar with because a lot of times, you know, the players will ref it at other colleges, right. which, is, which is fine. It's a way for them to, to get some more work in and, and make some more money in the summers. But uh, for us, we, since we have real officials, it's actually – much more structured as opposed to just, you know, a player running up and down in a T-shirt with a whistle. <laughs> and so uh, the, the r officials are being graded and judged and, and gaining knowledge because they have head officials walking the sidelines with a headpiece in 
and then they're given instructions at the end of the game as to what they did correctly or what they can get better right. at. So it is they're given their best shot, and they're not just hanging in the gym and waiting for the games to be over. So it, it helps the camp a lot. Yeah, it's going to be June 10th through 12th, and uh, again, GoRunners.com details on that. And then the individual camp, which will be June 20th through the 23rd, mm-hmm. uh, ages 8, 7, 6 to 18 years old or so. We'll see. <laughs> six, six if you're like Ryan Rosales. <laughs> uh, $200 a camper as well. Uh, and the uh, uh, current and uh, former CSB players will be working as camp. Do we have some former guys coming back? Or guys who recently graduated? We're looking into it. A couple of them are overseas right now. Right, so, exactly. But I have gotten a few calls. So we obviously give priority to the current players. Right. And then if they go home or if they have family obligations, then we start looking out to some of the older guys. So it'll be neat to see who comes. Yeah, and uh, you, with uh, kind of keeping these guys around all summer has probably helped a little bit too, get, getting them getting them working in the uh, in the camps and yep. uh, getting ready to go for another uh, another year and so uh matt you have uh, you have you have a week a couple weeks to kind of get mentally ready to be a counselor and a coach again mm-hmm. so uh what what do you like what do you like to do when you when your kids come in like obviously you're working with them all week long but what's kind of the things that you try to help instill in them a little bit uh, i really like for them to just have fun you know mm-hmm. because it can get real serious at times. Whether like you never know like what that kid like what that kid has going on like back home or right. in his family. So when they get a chance to get in that gym, I like to instill them. Just I want them to have fun, but I want them to learn as well. So you know, once you get a nice healthy balance between that, it's pretty good to see. And and you guys as players, when you get to serve as coaches, like you guys. There's a lot of bragging rights involved, right? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I'm still bragging to this day about last year. You know, I had to figure it out last year because at first when I was um, – the, fir- the very first day, I'll never forget, at the camp, I was at the rebounding station, and I was screaming and yelling, like, tell them, come on, y'all got to have fun, have energy, blah, blah. It's like 15 minutes in. And I got a migraine out of this world. <laughs> we go for I'm over like, an hour. And so my migraine lasts for a long time, and the day was just starting. Right. So I had to kind of – go like this, you know, I had to kind of right. go like this and peek at the <laughs> right time because I started off just, and that was, that was bad. So, you know, this year I feel like I'd be better. It is, right. it is neat to see these guys, they learn throughout the camp also. Right. You know, the first maybe 20 minutes, you know, I'll have control or, or some one of the other co- coaches on staff will have control of the camp and introductions and, and you know, explaining certain stations. And then the guys will be actually a little bit reserved and mm. a little bit quiet. At least the newer ones will. And right. so then you see our own guys come out of their shell throughout the week, too, because at the end of the camp, they're running around yelling, <laughs> and they're hyping their station up. They're saying, we've got to be the loudest. And at first, they might just concentrate on instructions. Yeah. Like, hey, guys, we're going to work real hard. We're going to rebound. We're going right. to have fun. And then at the end of the camp, they're high-fiving and, <laughs> yeah. and you know, dancing that. and stuff with the music going. So they all get better at it throughout the week, too. Yeah, it really is a fun part. time. My favorite part is the dancing. Yeah, of course. In between, like, the lunchtime, <laughs> cut the music on, some good on a space jam, <laughs> let them kids go loose. Oh, man. It's a, it's a competition, whether it's they're playing basketball or who got the coolest shoes or whatever. <laughs> but once that music come on, man, they go crazy. For some reason, the camp songs haven't changed since – it was me. It was still like jock jams somehow. They haven't right. come out right. with yeah. stuff. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. No, it's a it's a, a lot of fun and a great time. And again, uh, folks can go to GoRunners.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, clip, you can click on the quick links in camp. We'll have a, a little bit easier uh, button available here soon as well. So folks can register for that June 20th through the 23rd. Uh, $200 per camper. Space is limited, so uh, get it done today. Guys, thanks so much for joining us, yeah. and uh, good luck with this. It's going to be another another fun year. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. having us. All right. When we come back, folks, we're going to uh, preview the spring barbecue trucks and miles going to join us in studio these guys are uh, going to be one of the piece of the entertainment for uh, this thursday's barbecue we'll chat with them about that and much more stick around it's roadrunner rundown it's a look a style a way of life wherever you go Everything about it says luxury. And from the moment you sit behind the wheel, you'll just know and never look back. At Mercedes-Benz of Bakersfield, you can now lease a 2016 C-Class sedan for only $3.99 per month. So wherever the road of life may take you, make sure it's in a Mercedes-Benz. Test drive one today at Mercedes-Benz of Bakersfield and the Bakersfield Auto Mall. We strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to learning from those around us. Our professors and peers 
our coaches and teammates, and our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others just as they have inspired us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western, Western Athletic, Athletic Conference. Conference. Spring is here, and that means it's time for the CSUB Barbecue. The CSUB Athletics Department is firing up the grill on Thursday, May 12th from 5.30 to 9 in the Yocardo Center. Don't miss a night filled with great food, great music, and great fun. Gather up your friends and family for a great time and get your tickets today at Select Bonds and Albertsons locations and all Mexicali and Lengthwise locations, or get tickets online at Valley Ticks. The 44th Annual CSUB Barbecue, Thursday, May 12th in the Yocardo Center. We'll see you there. You know, I was the uh, Metro columnist in the Bakersfield, California for 10 years, and one of the recurring themes in my writing was sort of the self-analysis of Bakersfield. Who are we? Who are these people? Where did they come from? What kind of people are they? My interest in the Bakersfield sound is kind of connected to that because we are those people. We are the people who created that music. We are the people who enjoyed that music, who bought those records. Because it spoke to us in a certain way, it sort of reflected who we are. Read this book and kind of you get a feel for, you know, who we are. Introducing TBC Mobile from the Bakersfield, California. The most complete news, sports, weather, video, opinion, and lifestyle coverage in Bakersfield and Kern County. It's the easiest way to stay up to date on all things local while on the go. Read it on your smartphone or tablet. Download now by searching Bakersfield, California in the Apple, Google, and Amazon app stores. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund creates educational opportunities for over 300 student athletes at CSUB. By becoming a member and donating to the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund, you're not only helping the Roadrunners fund the scholarship needs of our teams, you're investing in the future. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund isn't just developing student athletes. We're developing tomorrow's leaders from lessons learned during competition. For more information, log on to GoRunners.com slash donate and become a member of the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. Welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown. Th my thanks to J.D. Pollock, Matt Smith, joining us in the last segment from CSB Men's Basketball. Uh, go online, GoRunners.com. You can click on the uh, Quick Links button and the camp registration. We'll also have a big uh, camp registration button up available as well. Take you to all the camp options for uh, your uh, young uh, boys and girls this uh, summer. So check it out online. Again, GoRunners.com. You can get uh, registered for CSB Basketball Camp. And again, we'll be previewing the uh, additional camps from various uh, coaches here in the next couple weeks during our final few weeks of this uh, this season of Roadrunner Rundown. Coming up Thursday at the Icardo Center, it's our big 44th annual CSB Athletics Spring Barbecue. And, uh, well, part of the entertainment this year will be Truxton Mile because the weather is much better. We want to welcome Alec and, uh, and Taylor from Truxton Mile. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> you guys, uh, so let's start with the weather thing. So last year, you guys you guys were pretty pumped to get to go to the barbecue and to play the barbecue, and then the rains came. <laughs> yeah, first year. Uh, playing <laughs> yeah, in like barbecue. 40 years, it, yeah. it, it never rains, by the way. Yeah, we, we didn't know if we were going to get an invite back if we were bad luck. <laughs> so it's uh, quite refreshing to be invited back, and uh, we're excited this year. It's clear skies. It's going to be a little hot, but... They have a beer garden, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There you go. There yeah. you go. This is one of those shows that all bands want to play because most of Bakersfield shows up. So. For sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. get a lot of fans at this this type of event. That's yeah. For sure. Last year we were, you know, we were kind of thinking, ah, oh, never rains on barbecue day. We'll avoid it. We saw the dark clouds coming in, and then Cancel it started to rain. Mile. Cancel <laughs> trucks <and> mile. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, and then we said, like, okay, I saw like they put some tents up over the stage, and then, but it, I mean, that would have worked had it not just poured torrential downpour, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the wind, and, and the so, wind. That's right. So you guys got to hang out and just drink beer all night, apparently. Yeah, we yeah, did. yeah, we did. We hung out, and had a few, <laughs> and uh, watched the. And then we watched the rain come down, and then we packed up and <laughs> hung out and had a few <laughs> and you were coming up from la last year right i was literally pulled up at old river and Ming. got a phone call hey it's canceled <laughs> after i was racing to get there through on the time. rain and i was literally 
if I forget when the show started, but I was five minutes away from when the show started too. Wow. Yeah, I think we did. <laughs> we been... set up your gear for you yeah, or something. You did, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of those shows, and then you know, lo and behold, they got canceled. But uh, not the case this year. Not the case not this the year. Case. So the good news is the weather's going to be uh, sunny and warm, and uh, so this is your opportunity to play the barbecue. What are you guys looking forward to? Uh, you know, the most. Oh man. Um, you know, it's it's an immense crowd, and th- there's some young faces there to kind of show off uh, some of our new music. Um, we're stepping in the studio in June. Got a new single coming out this summer. Um, I'm going to be playing some of that and just kind of show off some new material and have, have a good time. I mean, this is kind of our... Um, this is really our first time playing. You know, last year was gonna was gonna be the first time, but we didn't get to. So <laughs> we're we're excited about that, just to get out there and you know become part of the tradition. Where are you guys at? I mean, I know uh, you've been putting out uh, quite a quite a bit of music here lately, and get ready to go in in, in June again as well. So how important is I guess, I guess this kind of kicks off the. The barbecue always kind of kicks off the festival season, it seems like, right. as well in Bakersfield. So is this, is this kind of an opportunity for you guys as well to play in front of a group and maybe get even more bookings? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, recently, we're working with a booking agency up north, and we're going to be kind of expanding out throughout California this year nice. um, and this summer especially. And, uh, you know, definitely play some shows in Bakersfield. But, yeah, it's an opportunity for us to kind of get in front of some faces that probably haven't seen us before, especially within the college crowd. Yeah. Co- mm-hmm. College uh, and country music in general, you know, the fans are really um, uh, dedicated to the artist, so you know to get in front of some some younger crowd with this with this show and get some new music out there. And then um, the the plan is to get a new single out by summertime. And then we're gonna we're actually to kicked around the idea of doing a, a full fledged uh, record CD. And we kind of came to the decision that hopefully in fall time we're gonna put out another EP. Oh, okay, Six songs, yeah. Nice, Six nice. Fresh new songs. Yeah. Now, Alec, we didn't get to talk to you last time. These guys were on the program. It was before they opened for Easton Corbin in 2014, right? So we didn't get a chance to chat with you then. But uh, what uh, what's it been like for you, kind of playing with this uh, with this group here lately? It's been a blast. It's been a li- nice, long, fun ride. That's for sure. <laughs> and it just keeps getting uh, better and better as the time goes on. It gets harder. Sure. But it's getting more and more fun. We get to do a lot more. Uh, things now like outside of town and trying to get the name out there yeah that's and the big the big thing and that's what i've seen too i've seen you guys playing a lot more festivals and things like that mm-hmm. so what does the summer kind of hold for you in terms of that i mean you always Ooh. have a, that event you do out in taft and things like that so the summer hold quite a bit we've kind of been doing the taft thing that's yeah. kind of like a tradition now <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we have a bunch of dedicated <laughs> fans in taft um so this year you know like i said stepping in the studio getting the single out by summertime mid-summertime hopefully into july um, maybe doing a big show in Bakersfield to kick that off. Nice. And then um, we'll step back in the studio, hopefully in September, um, to record the rest of the material for the EP to be out in uh, late fall, early winter. Um, but the summertime, you know, we're just going to be booking shows, uh, playing a lot out of town, playing in Paso Robles, San Luis Obispo, Santa cool. Maria, Central Coast. San Diego. Trying to make it down to San Diego. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm just really trying to create a stir. You know, Texas is huge on um, creating a stir and, you know, with their red dirt circuit. And sure. We're kind of working that formula a little bit from California because California, there's a lot of country fans here. Yeah. And they're, they're everywhere in California, even San Diego, Los Angeles. So yep. we're going to try to hopefully, you know, really um, – create a stir in that and that circle of things we got to create a coin name for it like the golden state circuit or yeah something. exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah make right. that as a launching pad yeah. yeah and then we're going to try to go to nashville um i'm going in july and then the guys uh and i were f- trying to probably go and i would really like to go in late fall okay when, when the ep comes out to do a few things so we went once as a band yeah about uh, Four, it was a long time four ago. Or five years ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I really um, a goal, a bucket list goal is just to get out there, and it's not hard as long as you plan it right and make the calls. It's just sure. to get out there and play full band show. Right. So I think yeah. we're going to try to do that um, sometime in this year, if not early uh, 2017. It even seems like people that that do a different style of country music than Nashville, but when they go to Nashville, just the influence they get, or whether mm-hmm. it's maybe they go to the studio for just a day and they meet with one producer who says, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? And yeah. all of a sudden it's enlightening and uh-huh. it, it doesn't change your music, but it just seems to make it better. Even if you're not the Nashville type of sound, yeah. just going there seems to just benefit a band. Yeah, there's the... The, the best music I, I I'll stand by the statement the best musicians in the world are in Nashville yeah you know there there's some great musicians there um, the studio musicians the guitar players are incredible so I think going to Nashville it's always a good thing for us because it's such a huge you know 
a huge pond that you're going into right. and you kind of learn, you know, <laughs> right. what do you need to really work on? And then we can go back yeah. to home base and work on it. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's a really cool place to be that. And, um, Austin, Texas is another right. place too, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, we're going to step away and take a break. You guys want to hang around? Yeah, hang around absolutely. Segment? Uh, yeah, we'll talk a little music, uh, with trucks and mile. And, uh, they are going to be playing the barbecue coming up on Thursday night at the Icardo center. Uh, tickets available, Vaughn's, uh, Albertson's Mexicali and, uh, lengthwise also at ballotix.com. More with trucks and mile. When we come back, it's Roadrunner rundown. networks we love being a part of our community hello bakersfield the roadrunner scholarship fund creates educational opportunities for over 300 student athletes at csub by becoming a member and donating to the roadrunner scholarship fund you're not only helping the roadrunners fund the scholarship needs of our teams you're investing in the future the roadrunner scholarship fund isn't just developing student athletes we're developing tomorrow's leaders from lessons learned during competition for more information log on to gorunners.com slash donate and become a member of the roadrunner scholarship fund spring is here and that means it's time for the csub barbecue the csub athletics department is firing up the grill on thursday may 12th from 5 30 to 9 in the Ricardo center don't miss a night filled with great food great music and great fun gather up your friends and family for a great time and get your tickets today at select bonds and albertson's locations and all mexicali and lengthwise locations or get tickets online at valley ticks the 44th annual csub barbecue thursday may 12th in the Ricardo center we'll see you there Introducing a new way to get the news. The Bakersfield Californian E-Edition. It's not a website, it's the actual Bakersfield Californian right on your tablet computer, laptop, even your smartphone. All the news, features, pictures, and ads you're used to right at your fingertips. Now you can get the Californian on your schedule, anytime, anywhere, anyplace. Get your new Bakersfield Californian E-Edition today. Visit eedition.bakersfield.com. We strive to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to winning from those around us. Our professors and peers. Our coaches and teammates. And our opponents. We compete with integrity and passion. And we seize our moment when the opportunity arises. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others just as they have inspired us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Western Athletic Athletic Conference. Conference. In a fertile valley, a growing university with record enrollment and graduates serving the needs of a thriving community. A tradition of athletic excellence. Basil, off the screen, Basil, two seconds, Basil for the win! Now, champions of the Western Athletic Conference, CSU, Bakersfield. Welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown, and uh, don't forget, Spring Barbecue coming up Thursday, and uh, we have been chatting with Truxton Mile, the, one of the groups going to be uh, hanging out and uh, playing the uh, barbecue this, uh, this Thursday after uh, last year's, you just were rain delayed. Is all you were. It was a 12 month rain delay, yeah, right? Yeah, we were the ready. The show's <laughs> worth it. <laughs> it was a 12 month rain delay, and uh, they'll, get a, they'll go on stage uh, this Thursday night at the Icardo Center. We were talking at the break a little bit, and uh, about, and you guys talking about going in the, back in the studio and coming up with a, you know, a new EP, a single, and then an EP. Mm-hmm. How much, though, is that back in the day, it was like you need to get a record label to sign you, and then you can put an album out, or you can try to do it independently, but the cost will be too high. Now there's not really that physical album anymore. There's iTunes, there's Spotify, there's different ways yeah. to get music out there. How's that change things? Uh, the games change totally. <laughs> the formula is so different. Um, you know, these days you can pr- you can make a record at home. Right. Uh, gosh, uh, there's a band called the Swan Brothers. They their new single from the ground up. I I was reading about they recorded it at home in their home studio. 
and it sounds incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, you you can literally record, cut a full album at home, but we're going to record in a studio down in Temecula, and then we put it out through iTunes and all the major um, platforms. But, you know, these days, it's just a total different formula. You, you, you In a way, you do need a label if you want a lot of exposure, but in a way, you don't. It depends on your fan base, if you have dedicated fans. And, Alec, you were talking a little bit about how it used to be, you know, Mr. Record Mogul shows up to your uh, gig with a cigar in his mouth and a contract in his briefcase. That's not <laughs> how it goes anymore, does it? It's not how it goes anymore. No. Now they type in, you know, on the computer the band's name, try to find a video and see how many views they have. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, That's incredible. I was told, yeah, I was told by a guy we recently talked with in Nashville, give us something to work with so we can make you successful. Yeah, and, that, and that's true. Yeah, and, you know that that, that really makes wow. sense. It, it, it's a it's a business in the end, so they have all you know, the resources. Right. I feel I feel yeah. like being in Bakersfield, we have a good fan base. Uh, anytime we go to Nashville or Austin or anything, it's like, oh, you're from Bakersfield. You know, it, it has it has a yeah. name to it, and it will always have a reputation. So you know, yeah. being from a band from Bakersfield, it, it definitely kind of opens people's eyes on us a little bit more, which it, is nice. And that brings up another question I'm thinking about because obviously, you know, Merle Haggard just passed and mm-hmm. Buck Owens had passed a while ago. And so that sort of, you know, Red Simpson passed as well. So that yeah. that pioneer Bakersfield sound, those guys are now gone. Is there pressure on people like you <laughs> to try to find a way? And I know you're not really a traditional Bakersfield sound band, but still yeah. to keep that country music tradition going, is there, you know, you, you and other guys you kind of run around with, is there a little bit of pressure to say, hey, we got we to do something here? Yeah. We definitely used, you know, the sound, the, the Bakersfield sound to, like, influence our sound. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just we're, you know, in a new age now where we kind of take, like, the old and influence the new. Yeah. Right. So now we're almost, in a way for us, we just try to, like, pay homage as best as we can, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. We It's definitely, and if you look at our Spotify's or our, our iTunes, you'll see Merle Haggard, you'll see Buck Owens, uh, some traditional country on there. So we're definitely influenced by it. Right. Like Alex said, we kind of, you know, mix the old with the new, and that kind of develops what our true sound is. But, um, you know, there's a, there, there'll be pressure, but we're we're blessed to have had those heroes to, to pave the way in the legacy that they left. Because let's face it, there's not going to be another Buck Owens. There right. will never be another Merle Haggard. There <laughs> right. will never be another Red Simpson. Right. But, you know, we can take the gifts that they, you know, left us, you know, all this legacy and kind of see what we can do with it type of thing. And like you said, it brings attention to you automatically. Yeah, it does. Know? It does. It's, you know, it, it's the truth. You know, every time we... I've been to Nashville where the band has, and you're from Bakersfield. That's like, oh man, you guys oh, are from yeah. Bakersfield. I love Bakersfield. It's automatic street Everybody cred. loves Bakersfield. <laughs> and that's all. Yeah, it's automatic they, street. They cred. think yeah. we're from Beverly Hills, like how people in California <laughs> think of like movie stars. Sure. That's yeah, how they yeah. think of us. Yeah, Bakersfield, <laughs> Bakersfield, Nashville, or West. In Tennessee. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nashville West is they call us. So. Uh-huh. It's cool. Yeah, it's very, it's very, it's a blessing to be from here for sure. We got any? Uh, is there any chance some kind of Merle tribute on the playlist for Thursday? Anything? Uh, yeah, there might be. A, there okay. might be a Merle yeah. tribute. Yeah, we did at the country craft beer festival we did okay mm-hmm. and that happened to be the week couple days yeah right yeah there. it was a couple days after it happened yeah yeah we uh we we uh, we always you know sneak in a merle haggard songs we just love playing the songs yeah. they're so much fun to play um but uh we revamped the set list that day and said look you know we're gonna save our single that we usually play last well that won't be the last song this right. merle haggard song is gonna be the last yeah so that, nice. that was really cool to do it's a it's the least we can do and um you know it's we always love to play Merle songs. Yeah, any how, excuse to play Merle songs. How cool was? I mean, obviously he passed away and it was it was sad, but to learn that he wanted he did it on his tour bus. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I was know. like, oh how rock star is Ta- that? Yeah, to talk be about like, yeah, pulling <laughs> only my heart could do. I know. Yeah. I was like, man, that's seriously. So cool. I mean, he kind of knew the end was near, and he's like, take me to my tour bus. Yeah. I yes, mean, that was that was crazy. The guy was such a legend. <laughs> you know, you he went out. The way he wanted, and, you know, he told his son, Ben. Uh, ben said that, you know, Dad said he's going to go on his birthday, yeah. and he did, and, and he, he did. called the shots. And, you know, that's just that's just Merle's legacy just in right. general. He called the shots. He did what he wanted to, and people loved him for it. And, and he uh, did it with style, too. And he did yeah. it with such style. And he's like, God, the guy was talented. Yeah. He was yeah. super talented. So it's such a loss. Be surely missed. But, man, what a legacy he's left. Yeah, and, again, it's just a uh, something for, for – bands like you and other folks in town to sort of 
uh, tribute, but also uh, kind of keep the uh, the music rolling forward here Absolutely. in uh, in Bakersfield. Um, now we you didn't unfortunately you couldn't play today because your singers get our getting, singers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when I say incapacitated, that's not in a bad way. Like he's been drinking. No, he's uh, he's he's uh, he's got a lucky fin for a while. He uh, he I think he broke his hand. He broke like the two knuckles. The on like he i don't know what he did but <laughs> yeah so he's so. uh i don't think he's going to be playing acoustic on thursday but it's going to be fine but he uh, will have a cast he, okay. he will have a cast <laughs> if anybody wants to come by and sign, sign it sign it yeah yeah, yeah we'll have go. sharpies um <laughs> but yeah so he he's at the doctor right now he's getting it worked on um so he can be 100 percent you know <laughs> somewhat functional um by thursday unless you want one of us to sing but yeah, i don't no, know if you want that, know that. So. Have one. <laughs> yeah no but he's he's yeah he's going to be in a cast for a little bit he couldn't make it today, unfortunately, so that's why we uh, aren't going to play any songs. No but if anybody that's listening or watching wants to come out and hear us, come out Thursday. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so he's breaking knuckles. You guys playing some rough, like, honky-tonk uh, joints lately? Is this, like, <laughs> is this the old Baker Show Sound honky-tonk gigs? You yeah. yeah, yeah we're we're he's we really get getting rough. into character. <laughs> <laughs> we were playing the fight inside of me. Yeah, yeah Haggard, exactly. He, you know, he wanted to get into character. Yeah, so. he really got into character and went for that one, yeah. All right, well, yeah. Uh, we're, no, we're looking forward to it. I think uh, it, it'll be, you know, it'll be one of those shows when you're like, and because then he'll be like, remember that time I played the barbecue with a broken hand? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's right. Well, we'll use that as a place marker. You know, it was like, oh well, the Ryan. That's when Ryan broke his hand. You know, yeah. so that was 2016. You yeah, know? there yeah. you go. Yeah, there when, you go. When, when when you're huge, big time. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so we got that coming up on Thursday, and then um, is your summer kind of still in the air? Do you have a few things uh, that like come up immediately after this? Yeah. Um, Want to promote? It's it, it's half and half. Uh, you know, we're really revolving. We can play. We're blessed in the sense of we can book shows and stuff, and yeah. uh, we can go into venues, so we're really blessed with that. But we really need to hone in on the studio to get that done, or yeah. we'll never get done, and we keep pushing it back. Because for some reason, ever seems like, I don't know, I think it's just a growing up thing, but every year seems to go by so fast. Faster, faster yeah. and faster. So mm-hmm. um, the summer's a little bit open, um, uh, July on. We got we we uh, don't really have much booked yet, but we're gonna book a couple sure. things. And um, but we're kind of really one track minding on on the studio right now to get that done. Yeah. And once that's done, we'll be able to start booking shows and promoting the new single. And do you have to? I mean, obviously it's it's a studio, so you can redo things a million times. But yeah. you're also paying for that time, so you can't do it all. Exactly. The time. So you have to, so yeah. You have to, yeah, so you have to prepare and be different as opposed to you pre- when you prepare for a gig pre production. Pre-production. <laughs> we don't have the glory of the pros to make up whatever you want in right. the studio and hang out all day. Right. I wish. One of these days, I hope. Yeah, you kind of go in with a game plan, just of so you know what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Some things are uh, really organic. You know, They'll come yeah. together in the studio, and we still want to leave that open to do that. But we, we have an idea of what we want to do, and you know, time, time is definitely money, but sure. we want to go in and get it done so we can you know get this thing out and start playing some shows. Yeah, and how, I mean, obviously you brought up like you can't do it like uh, the guys with the big giant budget so what is it no. different for you guys how does it little how does the studio differ for you oh um pre-plan pre-production uh-huh. pre-production more than anything that's you know i i we we've done the studio twice now and the first time we were really young and didn't know what to do but uh <laughs> the, the second time the, the the main thing we learned you know pre-production literally is 90 percent of it you go in yeah. Once you have a game plan, it's like a recipe. You have your ingredients. You have your recipe. You know exactly what we're gonna do, and then you go execute it. Nice. You know our drummer, uh, he's phenomenal. He came in, and I think he cut these last two these last two tracks that we cut. He came in and cut them. And uh, the drums took three and a half hours to set up to mic them just right. Wow. He cut in ten minutes, and he was done. He's like, later, <laughs> peace. <laughs> so that's 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 the studio in a nutshell. It Dang. takes a long time to set up, prepare for. You go in, you cut it, get it done, you're out. Yeah. Yeah. That's why that's why cutting live albums is probably easier, right? You it is, <laughs> it is, it really is. You just got to be well rehearsed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you, do, you and uh, you brought up you get an opportunity to play some great places, and this town continues to have great opportunities. Whether it's a festival, whether it's a a, a bar, or a restaurant, yeah. seems to give a lot of opportunities to uh, to yeah. musicians that want to play. It yeah, definitely does. yeah. The Bakersfield community of musicians, um, you know, the 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 venues for a while uh, were kind of. You know, there, there weren't a bunch, and I, I see it getting busier and yeah. busier. And, and you know, with us in particular, the, um, the Crystal Palace has been very good to us. We love playing there. That's that's one of our favorite places on the oh, planet yeah. Yeah. to play, and forever will play if you know we ever make it big. I'm sure it's, <laughs> it, it, it's amazing. Um, we we play a lot around town. We play these festivals. You know, the craft beer festival was really cool. You mm-hmm. know, the CSUB barbecue. I'm yeah. sure is going to be amazing. It's our first year, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be great. Um, you riders, yeah, Village Fest. Right. We're looking. 
looking forward to Village Fest this year if we're going nice. to do that. So, you know, Bakersfield has a lot of opportunity for uh, different bands, and especially, you know, there's not many of them around, but for country bands. For sure. Well, uh, guys, thanks so much for joining us. And, uh, thanks for having thank you. us. Yeah, thank you. we'll see you Thursday at the, yes. uh, the barbecue. Yes, that's we it. We will see you guys there. All right, Trucks and Miles. Guys, thanks so much. And uh, again, thank you for joining us on the program. We will, uh, you can get the show anytime online at GoRunners.com. Don't forget, the uh, spring barbecue is Thursday. Tickets are available at ValleyTix.com. Bonds, Mexicali, uh, lengthwise locations. You can get tickets in advance, $30. $35 at the door. Dinner is served from 5.30 at 9 o'clock. Harris Ranch Beef, uh, New York uh, New York Steak or uh, Teriyaki Chicken. So we got uh, that all set up for you. And a uh, good opportunity. Trucks and Mile will be uh, performing and uh, Foster Camel Friends a bit as well. So a lot of stuff going on on Thursday. Join us out at the Icardo Center. And again, you can get our show anytime on uh, GoRunners.com. Also available Bakersfield On Demand on Bright House Networks as well. Next week, it's the Rowdies Preview Show. We will be bringing you the nominees for the 2016 Rowdies, which will be held at the Fox Theater on May 31st. So next week, your uh, first crack at the uh, nominees for the uh, 2016 Rowdies at the uh, Fox Theater. So we'll have all that on next week's program. Recap of baseball, softball championships uh, going on this week as well. Track and field recap uh, next week on the program. So we will catch you then. Thanks so much for joining us, folks. This has been Roadrunner Rundown. <laughs>